Good afternoon and good morning, wherever you might be. Welcome to the monthly Inter-Religious Association for Peace and Development Forum. In support, this time in support of the UN International Harmony Week on the theme for 2021 of the Building Bridges Across Boundaries, the role of faith and civic leaders. I am Tomiko Dagan, Senior Vice President of the Universal Peace Federation USA and IAPD Peace Forum Program Director. IAPD is a project of the Universal Peace Federation, which is an NGO in general consultative status with the Economic and Social Council of the UN. This IAPD webinar is specifically inviting faith leaders expert and concerned civic leaders to share their understanding and the wisdom regarding steps toward building a lasting peace. I would now like to invite our moderator of this program, Dr. Michael Jenkins, the president of Universal Peace Federation International and chairman of the UPF U North America. Welcome Dr. Jenkins. The floor is Thank yours. Thank you. Thank you, Vice President Duggan. Welcome, everybody, to all our viewers throughout the Zoom and also through YouTube and Facebook. We have hundreds online now. We want to bring you together with these great faith leaders. This is the United Nations Annual Interfaith Celebration Week, Interfaith Harmony Week. And it's always celebrated the first week of February. So we've asked some very distinguished and accomplished religious leaders to come forward, share their thoughts on peace and their inspirations on how we can bring peace in every country, with every culture, and do it with the, the blessing of God. So at this time, our first presenter today, everyone will give a five-minute, five to seven-minute presentation, including a prayer and possibly a scripture reading if they, if they so choose. Our first presenter today is the Reverend Samuel King Kabu from Montreal, Canada. Reverend King Kabu was born in Ghana, West Africa, raised by Christian parents, and he traveled to Europe to study agriculture, but the God called him to full-time ministry, and he was able to develop his biblical formation in Denmark and Sweden, and following missionary work to both East and West Europe, he emigrated to Canada where he continued his studies at the Lutheran Theological Seminary in Saskatchewan. During his studies, he met and married his beautiful wife of 36 years, Susan Priest, of whom he has blessed, been blessed with three children. Uh, Reverend King Kabu was ordained in 1986 and served as on the Saskatchewan Synod Council, where he, as well as in parishes in Saskatchewan, British Columbia, and in Montreal, Quebec. We welcome you. Reverend Dr. Samuel King Kabu, please guide us to heaven. Yeah, thank you very much. <clears throat> yeah, one, uh, one correction, uh, I don't have my doctorate yet. So I'm still uh, Very working good. on thank it. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I wanna say thank you so much for the invitation to be part of this forum uh, of um, World Harmony Week uh, with the theme uh, building bridges across um, boundaries. As we celebrate in the Faith Harmony Week, one major theme that comes to my mind is the vision, the vision of uh, for the moon that he had uh, several years ago. His invitation to the world community mm. to build a bridge that link that will link the continent of um, North America and Euro Asia by the Barren Strait. What is the purpose of this uh, endeavor? I might say personally, it is not just for trade, commerce, or even tourism. I believe the vision has a spiritual implication, and that is to link people of all races and faith of the globe to a common purpose of uh, a lasting peace in our world. When we think about some of the stuff that is going on in our world today, aren't we tired of all the conflicts? 
I'm too tired of all the wars that is going on on our planet, this beautiful planet that God created. And when we travel, we meet other people on such, when we travel and we meet people on such trails of peace, it changes who we are individually. For we are people because of other people. We have this proverb in our African culture that says that a person is a person because of another person. None of us is born to be uh, uh, isolated. We need one another so we can function as the human race. Linking Alaska and Russia by bridge or a tunnel or both, one can travel from Republic of South Africa to Chile by road or rail. Isn't that wonderful? It's a wonderful, yes. it's a wonderful innovation that Father Moon had. And my question that I ask myself, I say, why, why are we here on earth? Our time on earth is so short and we have to make the best out of it. Our time here on earth is to reflect the true nature of God, to love one another and hate for none. There is an African proverb, as I said before, that a person is a person because of another person. For the moon proposed the step of achieving this goal by bringing all religions of faith on the one God who created all things that is seen and unseen. So now, where do we go from here? In my younger days, I used to, to run. I was an athlete and I ran a relay. And as you know, when you're running a relay, you have four runners. One will start and pass on the baton to the second. Third. And then it is not from here. <laughs> um, as a relay, you have four teams, uh, four uh, runners, sorry. And uh, you had a starter, and then you pass on to the second, the third, and the last person who finished the race. And I believe that uh, Father Moon has passed on the touch to us, his vision. The vision as people, we must restrain ourselves from this destructive behavior that I engulf our globe and do what we, we can to fulfill that vision. We do have the means. We do have the means. We have a very rich world in which we live. We do have the means and we have enough resources at our disposal to bring to fruition the vision of Father Moon, linking all people around the world to a common purpose, building bridges of peace and not walls that divide. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Wonderful. Reverend Samuel King Kabu, you've lifted our hearts and we feel God's presence and blessing. Through religious leaders, we can gain anointing and insight on how we might better this world. So we thank you sincerely. And also your testimony about Father Moon's vision and Mother Moon's vision. Our next presenter will be the Honorable Baha'i Sahib Satpal Singh Khalsa, the ambassador of the Sikh Dharma USA, Chief Religious and Spiritual Authority of the Sikh Religion of the Western Hemisphere. He's currently uh, centered in Beverly Hills, California, but he is the ambassador of the Sikh faith to all the Western Hemisphere. Uh, Baha'i Sahib has been involved with all of Yogi Bhajan's organizations, and he also is the main Sikh Dharma minister and a member of the Khalsa Council. He is a peace ambassador with HWPL in South Korea. He was knighted and honored with the title of Sir by the Supreme Commander of the Philippines. He recently received a doctorate de degree in Sikh theology. Welcome at this time, Baha'i Sahib Satpal Singh Khalsa. We're honored to have you. Welcome. Peace. 
Thank you so much. Uh, my fellow interfaith leaders, brothers and sisters, I bow down to the div divinity in all of you. And I'm privileged to attend this event celebrating World Interfaith Harmony Week. Allow me to greet you with the Sikh traditional greeting, Vaheguruji Ka Khalsa, Vaheguruji Ki Fateh. Today's topic of building bridges across boundaries and how interfaith leaders can help is a very important subject which needs to be addressed globally. Religion plays a part in the daily lives of almost 93% of the global population. As we look around, we see that religious reasons are the main reasons for conflict and wars around the world. Religion may be a reason for the country, but religion can also bring peace and harmony. Religion, if it unites, it's a religion. If it divides, it's no longer a religion. Religious leaders can shape and influence the behavior of their uh, followers on a peaceful path. Now, the faith-based organizations According to the UN, there are over 200,000 faith-based organizations in the world. This comprises the largest civil enterprise in the world. So these faith leaders and faith-based organizations, I feel, can make a tremendous contribution towards peace and harmony. These faith-based organizations are deeply rooted and in all countries developed as well as undeveloped and poor countries, and they have a reach to the common people. From the Sikh perspective, our scriptures and our teachings are very explicit. Guru Granth Sahib, the holy scripture of the Sikhs says, Ek pita, ekas ke ham barak. There is one father and we are all his children. We are a global community and one human family. We have more in common than our differences. Our holy scripture, the Siddhi Guru Granth Sahib, addresses the issue of peace and enmity in a very unique way. The Siddhi Guru Granth Sahib, our holy scripture, contains messages, teachings, and sayings of over 30 saints that belong to other religions and regions in India. I feel this is an excellent example of interfaith approach. Sikhism preaches self-discovery and exploration of your inner self and to connect with that divine using your inner self. You know, you have to be at peace first inside before you can share the peace outside. And you cannot give something to someone unless you first have it. Have it. So we need to develop peace within us. Guru Nanak, who was our founder, his approach to reconciliation among the warring factions was to identify the root cause and show a way to harmony and peace by accepting and respecting the other diverse religions. Guru Nanak's message to humankind was very relevant to live a life of sharing live a life of service to humanity and a belief in the equality of humankind before one creator of all. Guru Nanak had said that no one is my enemy and no one is a stranger. Nako bari nahi begana. The Sikh gurus preached a practical religion making social activism as an essential part of our religion. You may have seen Sikhs all around the world. Whenever there is natural calamity, there is violence, or there is disturbances or earthquakes or tsunami, you know, the Sikhs will usually be the first responders. They arrive with food, hot food, medical supplies, and this Sikhs feel is seva, which means selfless service to humankind. Today, as we look around, the need for interfaith harmony is even greater than in previous times because of the chaos and what's going on in the world. You know, the roles of spirituality, the role of religious leaders, the role of religion and the scriptures is to develop a deep sense of interconnectedness 
beyond cultures, beyond boundaries, so that we can be bridge builders in conflict affected societies and work towards a peace and harmonious way of life and give peace to our future generations. You know, if we have hatred and anger in our hearts, the seed of God cannot sprout within us. We need to respect humanity. You know, there's a saying that being human and a human being, there's a lot of difference. We need to respect and accept that we are all humans and we are all children of the same God. At Sikh Dharma and our various organizations, we share our teachings with the rest of the world. We attend a lot of public events as well as this one, like this one. We go to all uh, interfaith religious events and we promote a happy, healthy, and holy way of life. This life inspires and uplifts all around us and we want to be a beacon of uh, light to other people facing challenges in this world. My prayer to all of you is to bring peace within your communities. My prayer to you is that you accept diversity. My prayer to you is to work towards bringing peace and harmony through interfaith dialogue, through, through interfaith religious events, such as this one, because violence is not the answer. Violence will just breed more violence. First of all, we are human beings and then our religion comes in. Religion come, came in much later. So we must accept the fact that we are all children of the same God. Now, the Sikh scriptures are very, very explicit in that we promote a very honest and a sharing life. We feel that whatever we have, we need to share with the, with the communities, with the world, because Sikh religion is a very, very open way of life. It's actually not called a religion, it's a way of life. And it, it has its, its roots. It's a, one of the youngest religions among the five religions, major religions of the world. So the Sikh teachings have been very new, relevantly new as compared to some of the other major religions. So let us, my prayer is let us all work together. Let us all come together let us all realize that humanity is one and the role of the faith leaders is very crucial in building bridges across diverse communities and among various faiths and traditions. You know, we may not be perfect, but our teachings and our scriptures are perfect. We must follow the true teachings of our respective religions and our holy scriptures. There will be no peace on earth without interfaith, interreligious dialogue. The world is at war at all levels. There's human greed, there's lust, lack of compassion, and all religions, as far as I have studied, teach compassion, love, respect for each other. So let us all come together and work towards a very peaceful and harmonious life. I thank all the organizers. I thank each one of you for inviting me to participate in this important event. And I wish everyone a very, very happy and very peaceful life and as we celebrate the World Interfaith Harmony Day. Thank you so much. Vaheguruji Ka Khansa, Vaheguruji Ki Fateh. Thank you. Baha'i Sahib Satpal Singh Khalsa has Sikh Dharma. You have blessed us this day and elevated our thinking and our hearts in love. Our next presenter today, we're honored to present to you the Reverend Eric S.C. Manning. Uh, Reverend Manning bio begins with his family. He's the devoted husband of Andretta M. Manning and the proud father of Ashley and Eric II. He was born and raised in Pennsylvania, Norristown, Pennsylvania, and got a bachelor's degree from Excelsior College, a master's and a doctorate at Erskine Theological Seminary, a prestigious university. And he's also served in the United States Army. He was called to preach in 1996 at Bethany Baptist Church. His initial sermon was walking in the spirit, not in the flesh. He was later brought into uh, and ordained as a deacon of the African Methodist Episcopal Church in the Second Episcopal District in August 2001. Reverend Manning received his first pastoral charge and was 
appointed to Welsh Chapel AME Church in Timminsville, South Carolina, and then Trinity AME Church in Pamlico, South Carolina, and many other AME churches he served in the Spirit of the Lord. And then finally, in June of 2016, Reverend Manning was assigned to one of the most famous churches in the, in the world, Mother Emanuel AME Church in Charleston, South Carolina. Mother Emanuel shook the whole world when, unfortunately, a terrible tragedy occurred where one young man who had racial hate in his heart shot nine persons in a Bible study on a Wednesday night, killing the pastor and eight others, and three survived. It was a horrific thing, but those three that survived really serve and love the Lord, and, and because pastors came together in that city, instead of violence and outbreak, the churches came together beyond racial boundaries, and they were able to secure a new path forward. So I'm very grateful to present to you this time this prestigious pastor of Mother Emanuel AME Church in Charleston, South Carolina. Mr. Manning, Reverend Manning's desire is to stay humble and please the Lord in everything that he does, for it's not his ministry, but the Lord's. It's not his life, but it's the Lord's life. His mission statement can be found in Colossians 1, 25 to 29, and knows that the steps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord. Reverend S.C. Manning, welcome. Uh, again, thank you so much for uh, this wonderful invitation uh, to be able to share uh, in an interfaith perspective, uh, which is always very much important. Um, <clears throat> pardon me. I, I, I do... Uh, of course, I'm, I'm immensely grateful uh, for this wonderful opportunity uh, to share in a warm dialogue. I believe that's something that we are definitely lacking in this day and in this age. Uh, you've heard from my bio perspective, and I was hoping that you wouldn't read it all. I, 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 I'm kind of just, you know, Eric from Norristown, Pennsylvania. I'm just a, a guy trying to do the work uh, in this season, in this time. Um, but of course, you know, serving the congregation of Mother Emanuel, uh, everyone uh, remembers the horrific act that took place um, in 2015, June 17, 2015, uh, when a white supremacist came in and uh, after, of course, being embraced in, in love and fellowship and sharing in a Bible study at the closing prayer, uh, murdered uh, nine beautiful wonderful family members of, of the church, our dear pastor, dear friend, Reverend Clement A. C. Pinckney, Reverend Grant hey, Simmons, uh, Reverend uh, Sharonda Coleman Singleton, um, and we began, and Reverend DePayne uh, Middleton, doctor, we begin, of course, always remember the names of all of those uh, who were taken that very dreadful day. Uh, the families came together during the bond hearing, and in the midst of that, uh, of course, shook the world uh, by offering in our faith tradition forgiveness. Um, and in that process, uh, they were able to share a, a message within our faith tradition, which is uh, forgiveness, which is always the, which is always paramount. Um, but when you begin to uh, reflect upon uh, the events that led up to uh, that dreadful day, uh, and even, of course, even now, um, after looking back in a retrospect perspective, there's still so much um, hatred uh, in the world and everyone always trying to uh, emphasize our differences as opposed to celebrating our similarities. Uh, it seems as if now more people would like to uh, uh, show how much different we are as opposed to, like I said before, focusing on our similarities. And what I've always asked people to do, and, and I realize within an interfaith perspective, um, it's a little bit different in our, sacred, in our sacred scriptures, but I always ask people to meet me uh, in Genesis chapter one and chapter, chapters two. That is, of course, the creation story. Uh, and in that process, we see that God created everything. Uh, and then uh, when we get to chapter two, uh, verse seven, we see that God breathed into Adam and Adam became a living being. Um, that breath, of course, 
um, was one breath. And through the process of time, that same breath is in all of us. Uh, and I believe at times what we try to do is look at our differences, but when we begin to meet each other on the basis of our humanity, when we begin to understand that we are all created in the image of God uh, and that the very breath of God is still moving within all of humanity. Uh, and of course, when that breath is gone, then we cease to live. But if we can meet each other on the basis of our humanity, if we can meet each other there, then possibly we can have a meaningful discussion a meaningful dialogue. Now, it, I wanna make sure that everyone understands that it doesn't mean that we're always going to agree, but what it does mean is that if we disagree, we can disagree in love. Uh, we can disagree in compassion and empathy. Uh, we can disagree in a way that we don't tear each other down, um, but as Archbishop Desmond Tutu wrote in his book, uh, Dignity, we can work to restore each other's dignity. Uh, a lot of times when you tear people down, of course, you begin to rob them of their dignity. And, and basically what you're saying to them is I don't appreciate you as another human being. We understand uh, from historical perspective, um, how many have suffered, uh, not just of course in this country, but from a global perspective. But it is realistically, I would, submit uh, the faith leaders who should be able to come together and begin to help the world begin to gain or regain its moral and ethical compass to understand that we are all in this together. Yes, we have difference of opinions. Yes, we have different ways of doing things, but I can at least appreciate all of my bro fellow brothers and sisters because we are all created in the image of God. We are all human beings. Uh, the same words that you may use to tear me down will hurt. Uh, and that same hurt is expressed and felt on other levels as well. But when we begin to understand uh, that we can meet each other on the basis of our humanity, then we get to know our neighbor, um, whomever our neighbor may be whatever faith tradition they have, we can still embrace them as a fellow brother and or sister. Uh, and when we take the time to get to know our neighbor, then what we are saying to them is You're, you are important, your life matters, your feelings matter, you are important. And when we begin to reinforce force that same message, then hopefully prayerfully others will begin to understand that there is indeed more that unites us than divides us. And no longer then will we focus on the things that separate us, but we will begin to look for the commonality that draws us all closer together. Martin Luther King said it like this, we may have arrived on these shores in different boats, but we are all now in the same boat. And I think realistically, when we begin to understand that, then that helps us uh, draw, you know, again, not just on our differences, but also on our similarities. Another quote that I often invoke is Edmund Burke, uh, because he had said the only thing necessary for good people or well, for evil to triumph is for good people to do nothing. Uh, and again, it's up to those good people who in this particular dialogue, would, I would submit our faith leaders, would be the ones who would be able to speak out against the injustices of the day, uh, that we are no longer silent, but we begin to tell others that this is not the way that we ought to treat each other. This is not the way in which we are to appreciate each other. This is not the way that we are to show love uh, for our common man and woman. So I would hope that as we continue to emphasize on our similarities, 
that we begin to focus on those similarities. We begin to focus on what unites us and not focus on what divides us. And when we do, when we do, then we will be able to hasten that day, as Martin Luther King said when he invoked the old Negro spiritual, that we will be able to say we're free at last, free at last, thank God Almighty, we are indeed free at last. Thank you once again uh, for giving me the opportunity to share and to be a part of this wonderful, this wonderful uh, panel of guests uh, as we discuss interfaith harmony on this week. Thank you again so much. Thank you, Reverend Eric Manning. And what a blessing to have received your inspiration and your, your vision and, and love from the Lord. Uh, the United Nations Interfaith Harmony Week is something that UPF has really been active with for many, many years. And originally, Father and Mother Moon asked that we work to bring the faith leaders into the UN, not just as advisors on the outside. So it took years and years, but now there's an interfaith assembly, the Interfaith Harmony Week, but also there's an assembly in the General Assembly room now that UPF was part of uh, working with the president of the United Nations over the years, the different presidents. We were able to come into the United Nations and create that harmony where our religious leaders are not just outside NGOs that are just advising, but they're actually really actively helping to shape the direction of the world because really the spiritual leaders should take the central role. I'm very honored to present to you now Representative Terry Alexander, who's also an ordained Methodist pastor. He is a longtime state representative of the state of South Carolina. He was first elected in 2007 and has served all the way till today. That's quite, quite a long history. And he's an adjunct professor at Limestone College, a managing partner of Sunrise of the PD and pastor of Wayside Chapel Baptist Church. He's also really a prominent leader and former president of NAACP, Florence Branch. And he is a person that really is bringing people together. I met him, Reverend Manning, when I went down with Dr. Luan Rouse, who's a United Methodist pastor. And we went to pray at Mother Emanuel one year after the tragedy. And it was that, that was my first time to meet Representative Terry Alexander. We had such a great prayer and fellowship. We had a fellowship at the, at the Methodist Church around the corner and the Wesley United Methodist Church. And uh, we really, really, I could feel the spirit of the Lord was bringing us together. Later, uh, Representative Alexander rep recommended the parents of the year who became parents of the year, uh, a general and his wife who served in the legislature with him, but uh, he was serving from the other party. And that was what was so beautiful. Uh, this man knows how to embrace all people and bring our nation together. I believe he has a calling on his life to help us bridge the gap. We've got to really eliminate and dissolve hatred so we can cooperate together. I'd like to present at this time, Representative Terry Alexander. Hold on a minute, I need to unmute myself. Thank you very much, my brother, my friend, um, Thank you. Brother Jenkins. So glad to be here with you and to share with you. And to my friend, uh, Brother Manning, who I think we spoke this past couple of days um, this week. So glad to have you be a part of this ministry that, that's going to help shape and form um, this world moving forward from a peaceful perspective. Um, let me say good afternoon. First of all, I am a, I'm a diehard Brother Jenkins, I am a diehard Baptist preacher. Oh, please. A diehard country Baptist preacher. <laughs> but, but that's all right. We, we'll get that straight later on. Um, <laughs> but good afternoon to those of you in the Eastern U.S. And, and welcome to all of you from around the world or wherever you might find yourself. As um, Brother Jenkins has mentioned, I am Reverend Representative Terry Alexander from Florence, South Carolina, and I serve as associate pastor now at Monumental Baptist Church in Florence. I'm also, as been mentioned, an elected official of the state of South Carolina, where I served in the South Carolina General Assembly as a representative for parts of Florence and Darlington County in Eastern South Carolina, District 59. 
I've been ordained minister now for over 30 years and have served as an elected official about the same. Both give me possible opportunities, if you will, to serve humankind. And I, and I take great pride and joy in doing both. I came to this journey in my life, as mentioned, years ago, seeking to serve God's people in some capacity. I recall vividly some many years that I asked, I prayed to God that, that if this is where you would want me to be in this political game, uh, then make me good at it, not for my name's sake, but for his name's sake. I pray even today as, as we deal with this, that God might be pleased with my work for kingdom building here on earth as it is in heaven. And that is where we find ourselves in both the mundane and, and the spiritual realm of life, determining how we make the wrongs right. Our life today, as we see it, is, is filled with rage and, and so much hate. And, and let me tell you that, that I struggle, Pastor Man, and I, I struggle and, and I moan over the hatred that so many people have against one another. Hate, oh. a, a very small four-letter word, but so meaningly and meaningfully deadly. I, I'm, I'm trying to put my arms around it. How can one human being hate another human being? What's, what's inside of you or what's inside of that person or not inside of you that make you want to hate someone else? What makes hate so hateful? And that's another conversation. Some, something is missing. Something is not there. So, so as a pastor slash politician, I have the role and I give myself this role through God to, to bring this question and other questions to light in that we might make living brighter for the kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven. How do we, how, how do we make earth as it is in heaven? How do we form, as, as Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King mentioned, a, a beloved community? I believe, I believe that that is the charge of the faith leaders. Uh, Dr. Jenkins, I, I think when we went to Korea the year before last when, when Newt Gingrich's speech, and I, I don't always agree with his politics, but he said something very, very profound and, and it stayed with me. He said that, he said that if we're going to change the world, then it would be left up to the faith community. Amen. If we are going to change the world, Newt Gingrich said, he says it's gonna be left up to the faith community. And, and that is something, and that is something all of us in the faith community must bear yeah. that cross. We, we, we are called by God to, to seek after God, to, to search for God. Somehow and somewhere, we are to point people to a better place in their being. That's our charge. Not to be political, you know, Democrat or Republican. Our charge as faith leaders is to seek after God and to point people to God. For the most part, Brother Man, and for the most part, politicians, and I know I'm, I'm in it every day, politicians are more concerned about getting reelected than providing service My to the people. Goodness. If we want to be great, let him first serve, our, our beloved scriptures tell us. I, I believe those of us in the faith community and slash the political arena should concern ourselves to service. We should not be guided, or our decisions should not be guided by the next election outcome. Our politics, if we are true to ourselves, our politics should be guided by our religion and not our religion Amen. guide our politics. We, we, we should be guided not by the election outcome, but, but guided by the eternal. I told some of my younger colleagues coming in in the ministry, I said, I said we should be concerned about eternity and not the next election. So yeah. therefore, we should look further uh, down the road. Faith leaders, such as, our, uh, as, as ourselves, need to look to eternity rather than the next election. Our faith, and I see it, our 
faith becomes cloudy. When our efforts for world peace is contingent upon someone getting reelected. It should not matter to the faith community one's political affiliation. It should not matter um, one's way of living or one's lifestyle. What matters to us is that we all share in the one God. The leaders of the faith community are the ones who can and should bring us all together. If there are going to be a coming together, if you will, it will be the faith community. I, I'm conscious of, of, of Newt Gingrich's comments. If we're going to do it, if it's going to be done, it cannot be done without the faith community leading the way, the apex of this movement. It should be our faith in God that, that keeps us, and we should spread that faith. And we all have it, faith that is. We just use it differently. We need to focus one's faith on one's faith and, and not their political persuasion. We have to be more intentional and sincere about our relationship with our God. If we would be more intentional and sincere about our relationship with one another, if we would but use our faith to help, then it would help. It shall be given. Those of us who are in the political arena have been elected, or should I say have been called by God to serve in this capacity, has the responsibility, no, no matter where you are, to, to share God's words and his divine origin for our lives and, and how our lives are all a part of the beloved community, regardless of race, creed, sex, or origin then we should help facilitate the fruits of the spirit. Then and only then when we are accepting of one's differences, we will begin to facilitate the fruits of the spirit. If there's going to be a change, uh, Brother Jenkins, and I'm glad to hear that, that, we're, that we're in the capital, the faith community is in the capital. If there's going to be a change, that change starts with you and me let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Representative and Reverend Alexander, God bless you. Thank you so sincerely. I always feel so much joy when I hear you teach and preach. And I will forever remember that you're Baptist born and Baptist bred. <laughs> That's right. I think and when I be and when I die, I'll be Baptist dead. <laughs> right now, the beautiful thing is we are all family, and there is one God that's bringing us all together. We believe the Holy Spirit has no respecter of persons, and we can bring everybody together. One of the great leaders of Islam of our time, a world leader, is Imam Muhammad Ali Ilahi. My dear friend and brother, I've been to his home many times and been to worship on Juma prayer and his wife and my wife and I have had wonderful times together with him. Uh, he was born in Iran and he did his seminary studies not only in Iran, but also at University of Michigan, a master's degree in art from Wayne, Wayne State University. He's got the endorsement of the highest leaders of the Muslim world in many, many different areas. He uh, began his Islamic studies all the way at the age of 12, and he be became quickly a distinguished student and preacher at the age of 15. In 1991, he came to America from uh, Iran to attend a special conference, and that conference was being uh, hosted by Father and Mother Moon, and it was a conference on the world religions, and he had a very deep experience with God there, Allah, calling him to come forward to America. He has been an enormous peacemaker. He's written dozens and dozens of op-eds for the Detroit News, and he's always a voice of reason and calm. And I just uh, want to introduce him with just a couple pictures very quickly because he was with us in Korea. And that Korea experience is something I'll never forget. Here we are at the DMZ between North and South Korea. And as you see, Imam Alahi is leading the prayer there. And we are there at the 
bell, which Bishop Stallings helped le lead this movement of pastors. We went to the DMZ, the 38th parallel, and then we marched to the actual border. And there's Imam Alahi with Pastor Abernathy and religious leaders from all backgrounds and Korean religious leaders joined us. There we are there, he's with Bishop Riley and, and Bishop uh, uh, Keith and uh, so many, uh, Keith Allen and many others. And we marched right to the place of prayer. And we prayed there. You can see Imam Alahi here. And as a something faith leaders, we brought diplomats and we brought elected officials to Korea. All that is very important. I work also with the Washington Times. It's all very important. But I really do believe that faith leaders have to lead the way. That wall is not going to come down by political efforts alone. It's gonna come down led by the spirit of the Lord. So when we raised our hands and prayed over and that, that bridge is the bridge of no return. That bridge was closed during the 1950, June 25th, never to open again. We're praying over the land of North Korea. You can see the military installations right over there. And that's, a, that's how I want to introduce my brother, my teacher, my friend, Imam Muhammad Ilahi. Welcome. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, my brother and friend. We are one union of love and brotherhood and uh, one family. I'm very speechless of your uh, generosity, Reverend Jenkins, and uh, your, uh, your integrity. Uh, God bless you. Uh, yes, as a matter of fact, uh, it was last February, uh, today is February 4th, and our last summit in, in Seoul yes. was last year exactly the same day. Yes, it was. It was from uh, February 3rd to February 5th, actually, yes. for yes. three days that we were in that wow. huge international center uh, in, in Seoul, and we prayed for a unification of uh, Koreans. And the, the photos that you just uh, showed us, uh, I think they were from the year before that uh, we all together visited the border and we uh, prayed for peace and prayed for, for unity. Uh, uh, last year we had over 6,000 delegates, I think, from all over the world. Uh, representing 170 countries uh, of this planet that met in that amazing uh, facility in, in, in Seoul. And uh, I remember uh, Reverend Dr. Jenkins, yourself, uh, uh, I think Tomika, Sister Tomika was there as well, uh, but you, uh, Archbishop uh, Stallings, and, uh, and of course, our brother, our friend, uh, Dr. Uh, Thomas Walsh, you were shining in that uh, huge conference that uh, uh, Dr. Ben Kimun, the, the former uh, uh, Secretary General of United Nations was, was there. And we, we started with uh, listening to uh, uh, the, the presentation of uh, uh, Dr. Hak uh, Jahan Moon. Uh, so you brothers and you leaders were shining stars of that galaxy of love and education that uh, uh, experience exactly on the same day, uh, February uh, 4th, uh, 2020. And a year later in 2021 now, we are gathering here and we are following the, the mission of, uh, of that uh, World Seminar and World Summit, the Summit of Soul, Summits of uh, uh, Intellect, and Summit of uh, People of Consciousness. Uh, you, you mentioned in uh, uh, actually 1990, I think, was the uh, conference in, in San Francisco almost 30, 31 years ago. And that was the first uh, time I met with uh, uh, late uh, Father, Father Moon. 
And I still remember that he said that the purpose of our creation, the reason God created us was not for us to come here and collect money and you know look for more power and, and arrogance. Mm -hmm. He created us for one single reason, to love one another, to love our family, to love our neighbors, mm -hmm. our community, our country, and humankind. And it's amazing that 30 years after that uh, San Francisco summit, we met in Seoul and the resolution was beautiful. A global community of peace loving citizens. That was the resolution of last February summit in, in, in Seoul and the promotion of peace. And I'm so impressed today uh, honestly, all these words of wisdom from the Sikh representative, from the uh, Christian different denomination of, of a Christian faith, uh, so inspired that this is exactly the religion that we believe, religion of love, religion of unity. And if anyone, any group talk in the name of God or in the name of religion, but promote division and, and hate and selfishness and, and greed. We don't believe in that kind of religion. The religion that we believe is religion of reason, religion of intellect and religion of love and peace. Mm -hmm. So the resolution of, of last year uh, summit was that how can we help one another to educate uh, ourselves and everyone in promoting peace. To have peace, we need to also promote the culture of patience, the culture of forgiveness, the culture of uh, reconciliation, uh, the culture of respect, the culture of uh, humbleness. These are the things. And as uh, Reverend Tree, I think, uh, now mentioned, I heard from you, uh, Dr. Jenkins, uh, last year that you mentioned that, yes, peace. Uh, start from here and from me, from yeah. everyone. Peace, yeah. start, the world peace starts from us, from me, from my heart. That the Quran says, Qalbin Salim, a peaceful heart. And from God, who is Allahumma anta salam wa ilayka salam wa minka salam, you are the source of peace, you are the origin of peace, and you are the end of peace. How this peace starts from ourselves? Because the biggest war is not between North or South. The, the biggest war is not the, the First or Second World War. The biggest war was not Vietnam or Korea. The biggest war is the war inside everyone, that we have the army of intellect, the army of angels, the army of evil, the army of animals, it depends on us which one we vote. There is an election inside our soul, whether we want to be the soldier in the army of angel, a soldier in the army of evil, a soldier in the, the other armies, it is up to us. How we make decision, how we vote in that internal war that in Islam we call it Jihad al-Akbar, the biggest war, the biggest jihad is not the external war. The biggest one is the internal one, the conflict between all these armies of intellect and, and ignorance inside everyone. How do we vote? Well, religion can help us. Faith can help us. Intellect the human intellect, and then the heavenly inspiration. When religion and reason, <laughs> they combine together, then we can have the, the journey of peace, starting from our heart, and then to our house, and then our community and country on the world. We have it in the Quran, we have it in the Bible. When God tells us in the Quran, we make, make sure, don't lie, don't insult anyone, don't make fun of someone else, don't harm, don't kill, don't backbite, don't waste, don't spread gossip. And at the same time, he tells us in the Quran that 
save your soul, save your family, feed the hungry, keep your promise, keep your oath, reply evil with goodness, and reply goodness with the best. And even if you face the, the army of ignorance, your call is salam alaikum, send peace even to your enemies. If we do all these practices, then we have peace. This is why religion and reason can help us. And let me conclude that one of the things that I like that new president, President Biden started in uh, January 20th, he talked about unity and he said something really that matches with the subject that we are talking today, the, uh, but I hope that the politician, they practice what they preach. I mean, it was a good preaching, good message, mm -hmm. but we are waiting to see it in action that he said, we want to fight our enemies. Who are our common enemies? He mentioned nine enemies. Majority of them are the, the internal enemies. He said, let us work together to fight our foes. Anger, resentment, hatred, extremism, lawlessness, violence, disease, joblessness, and hopelessness. Wow. Really, except of jobless and hopeless, the rest of them, anger and, and, and arrogance, those, 70, uh, those seven deadly sins that even Bible said, anger, arrogance, envy, greed, glutton, laziness. You know, these are the things that if we follow, then we can the win the internal war. And if we win the internal war, we can achieve the internal peace and we can share that peace with our family and with the world. And this is the order of intellect and the order of Allah, the order of Jesus, Moses, Abraham, all of them came with the same word to wake up, start your journey with yaqza, with understanding, and then continue wow. the, the mission of love, the mission of peace. We pray that that happen as we pray for those who are still suffering. You remember Re Reverend Jenkins last year, the pandemic is still just started last February. It yeah. was not in the United States, a little in South Korea and more in China. And we prayed to God for, uh, for uh, healing. And at that time, our, uh, our prayer was answered because South Korea and China are almost over with that. We need to that prayer for America, yes. for Europe, for, for Middle East, for Africa, for everywhere today, and ask God for, for healing for this global pandemic that uh, thank God now we have the vaccine and we pray that this vaccine be effective and we celebrate the, the celebration of health and hope and the end of this pandemic, inshallah. Inshallah, inshallah. Inshallah. Shukran. Thank you, Imam Allahi. We're so grateful for you. Archbishop George Augustus Stallings is the chairman of the Interreligious Association for Peace and Development for all of North America. He's led 30 times we've gone to Korea together. He's led delegations of religious leaders all over the Middle East, all over the world. He took a delegation to over 120 countries and he sent delegates to those 120 and went to many of them himself. Welcome with me, the chairman of IAPD for North America, Canada, and the United States, <laughs> Bishop George Augustus Stalins, Jr. Imani yeah, Temple, Washington, DC. Thank you very much, Dr. Jenkins, and to all of my distinguished and venerable colleagues who have joined us today on this uh, UPF, Universal Peace Federation Interfaith Forum, as we focus on the theme, building bridges across boundaries and celebrating this week, the UN Interfaith Harmony Week. Uh, I find myself in a very uh, reflective mode in which I am seeking more and more each day to gain a deeper sense of spiritual 
discernment, uh, awareness as to not only what is my purpose uh, and calling in life, but how it can link and unite with others to bring about a world of true and lasting peace. Uh, I am encouraged by the words of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. who stated it so clearly, and I've heard other speakers mention this iconic figure of American history. Uh, even the Reverend Dr. Sum Young Moon called Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. the greatest figure in the history of the 20th century worldwide. And you are familiar with that statement of Martin Luther King when he said, we are all caught in a, in an, we are all caught in an inescapable network of mutuality, tied in a single garment of destiny. Whatever affects one directly affects all indirectly. That whole concept of an inescapable network of mutuality means that we can reach a point where we can be reciprocal in the way we, we treat and respect one another. It is a condition or quality of being mutual, of mutual dependence, and that we are counting on each other and God is counting on us to be the reflectors of what it means to be a child of God. The distinguishing hallmark or characteristic of a child of God is that he or she is a peacemaker. Did not Yeshua HaMashiach in the Hebrew language, Jesus, the anointed one, say as it's recorded in the gospel of Matthew chapter five, verse nine, blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called the children of God. And if that be the case, then each one of us must allow the divinity within us. I heard that mentioned earlier, created in the divine image and likeness of God, that each one of us must strive to be a peacemaker, to be a reconciler, to be a hearer, to be the repairers of the breach, the restorers of lost ruins. It is a part of our anointing, our divine calling as spirit beings robed in flesh, spiritual beings who are practicing to be human, not human beings attempting to become spiritual. That we are striving in our everyday living to be the visible and the tangible manifestation of God. I heard our beloved brother Seek says, I bow to the divinity within each one of us. That is so profound that we could have for each other the love for one another as we purport to have for God, Allah, Yahweh, Elohim, Great Spirit, El Shaddai, Baba Lua, Eba, whatever name we call our God, that divine, supreme, heavenly parent who has breathed everything into existence, that if we could strive to find the commonality that unites and binds us together, if we seek for unity. I recall the passage from Paul's letter to the church at Ephesus, chapter four, verse three, one particular translation I learned early on in my uh, priesthood was this particular translation, make every effort to preserve the unity of the spirit that has peace as its origin and peace that has the spirit as its origin and peace as its binding form. Make every effort to preserve the unity that has the spirit as its origin and peace as its binding force. That is what we're called to do. As we look at the world, as we look at the Middle East, as Dr. Jesus said, we've been there dozens of times to the Middle East in the past 20 years, striving to engage in a, soft, in a level of soft diplomacy, not military might or governmental strength, but through a soft diplomacy of love, loving one another, and that we see the need to bring about that love, that healing of a peninsula, North and South Korea, bringing them back together as one. People of the same root, the same soil, people of the same language, of the same culture. I heard Reverend, my beloved brother, Reverend uh, Terry Alexander talking about the level of hate. He spoke very passionately about hate. And I recommend to all of you, you may not be familiar, you all are familiar with the great artist 
and composer songwriter Stevie Wonder. And I often say Stevie Wonder could see that and Stevie is blind. Stevie can really see what we are called to be as all cut from the same source, from the same cloth as my brother Elihi said, very Imam Elihi said so clearly, you know, we are all of one blood. Uh, he, I would encourage you to listen to a song, go to youtube.com and listen to a song composed by Stevie Wonder entitled Loves in Need of Love Today. And the words are very simple. It says, loves in need of love today. Don't delay, send yours in right away. Hate, hate is going round, breaking many hearts. Stop it, please, before it's gone too far. We have to stop the divisiveness that's in our community, in our families, in our communities, in our tribes, in our nation, in our world. We have to get back to the whole concept of being what it means, understanding what it means to be a child of God, to be a peacemaker. And understanding what peace is. Peace is not simply the absence of war. Peace is a concept of societal friendship and harmony in the, in the absence of hostility and violence. It is a lack of conflict as we see in war. It's a lack of conflict and freedom from the fear of violence between individuals, groups, and nations. It is a state of tranquility and quiet from oppressive thoughts and emotions. And it is also the ability to resolve conflict without violence and, and working together to improve the quality of life for all of its citizens. That is what that is a challenge that we face as organizations, as NGOs, non-governmental organizations. That is what we find ourselves confronting each and every day in our ministries, in our communities. How are we going to be men and women of peace? And so our call for the reunification of North and South Korea is urgent because what affects the people of North and South Korea, as King said, directly affects each one of us indirectly. We have an obligation. We have a divine command, a commitment, a, dem a divine charge. We have a, a charge to keep and a God to glorify, as one of my ministers would always say, as from quoting the song. And then our responsibility to be authentic representatives of God on earth, to be the ambassadors for Christ, as God, as it were, pleading through us that we have a responsibility to work for peace on the entire planet not just in the United States, not just in Canada, not just in Africa, not just in Asia, not just in uh, Europe, but around the world. That's our calling. And so I want to remind us that as we celebrate this week, the Interfaith Harmony Week sponsored by the United Nations, as we seek to be a bridge builder, to be the conduit, the earthen vessels in which the spirit of the living God dwells, to show that the transcend that the excellency of the power to do these things comes not from us but from God. We are called to be peacemakers. I want to close out with a prayer, praying for the reunification of North and South Korea. A charge that uh, Dr. S uh, Moon, we we affectionately call her Mother Moon, Dr. Hak Jahan Moon, the Mother of Peace. She has called us to work for the reunification of North and South Korea. And I want to offer up this prayer. Uh, one of the beautiful things about being of Catholic background. Yes, I know, uh, Pastor Terry Alexander. I, you know, even though I was a Roman Catholic, uh, for 10 days after birth, my grandmother and grandfather, who were devout members at Star of Zion Missionary Baptist Church in New Bern, North Carolina. Yes, I'm a Tar Heel. And I, you know, as a Tar Heel, I said, I'm Tar Heel born and Tar Heel bred. And when I die, I'm going to be Tar Heel dead. So it's like the Baptist, it's like the Baptist. <laughs> but but uh, I'm, 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 I'm a Baptist because I'm born of his spirit in Washington blood. I'm a Methodist because I have a method that can lead us to salvation, the word of God. I'm Episcopalian because I'm a bishop, Presbyterian because I'm a priest. I'm a church of God, church of God in Christ. I'm a Muslim because I seek to do the will of God. I'm all of that combined. <laughs> I'm a walking ecumenist. I am a moving and walking ecumenist. And so I want to offer you this prayer as a, as a Catholic priest. Amen. 
uh, this prayer of a, of a, of a saint, uh, an Italian saint born in the latter part of the 12th century uh, and uh, 1181 and who died in the 13th century in 1226. I speak of none other than the great Saint Francis of Assisi and you're all familiar with this prayer. Let us pray, Lord, make me an instrument, make me a channel of your peace where there is hatred, let me sow love, where there is injury, pardon, where there is doubt, faith, where there is despair, hope, and where there is darkness, light, and where there is sadness, joy. O oh, divine master, grant that I may not seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love, for it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned and it is in dying that we are born yeah. to eternal life. Have a great celebration of the UN Interfaith Harmony Week. And again, thank you for being a part of this great event. Thank you. Thank bless, you. You. bless you, bless you, bless you. Thank you, thank you. That was beautiful, yeah, beautiful. Bless you, bless you. Very powerful prayer. Archbishop Stalin, as usual, we, we <laughs> know this. Yes, with the power of prayer. Yeah. A lot of inspiration. They're drawing blood from me now. Blood. <laughs> yes, yes. Blood from my veins, Terry. Love, bless you. Doctor Jenkins. Great role model. Uh, I think our uh, conference moderator disappeared. Doctor Jenkins, would you like to conclude our uh, forum? Yes, surely he will be back then. Then uh, I mean, we know that he is so busy. Uh, I don't yeah, know he, how Dr. Jenkins does it that I don't multiple either. jobs at the same time. You know, all exactly. uh, I don't he's know how he does it. God he's, bless he's, no, right. I, I think it's a computer uh, issue, right. Dr. Uh, Jenkins. Maybe. Oh, I'm sure he doesn't live there. <laughs> Loves us. He's like okay. ether. He's, he's like ether. He disappears into thin air. He said, <laughs> he, uh, he, he is, he's a man for all. You're talking about Thomas More, the man for all seasons. Uh, the Reverend Dr. Michael William Jenkins is a man for all seasons. All seasons. He is. He is. He is. The Energizer Bunny. Hi, huh, Terry. The Energizer Bunny. Keeps on moving. <laughs> okay. Keeps on. Since Dr. Jenkins is gone, <laughs> to, to the space. <laughs> I'd like to conclude as a IAPD program uh, director. Thank you so much. Uh, Archbishop Stallings, you are the uh, president, chairman of IAPD uh, North America. I want to really thank you. It was the love, spirit of love and peace were permanent Amen. Amen. So, uh, in Amen. this program. So we thank you all for attending and then we look forward to seeing you uh, next month. This IAPD Peace Forum uh, will be held uh, under the direction of Archbishop Starings and Dr. Jenkins. And so we would like to welcome you uh, for next month, uh, which is in March. So thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you. All. Thank you. God bless thank you. 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 Here I am. Hey. Mr. Sahib back. It was wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank, bless you. thank, you. thank, you. thank, you. thank you. Bless you all. I want you to know that we'd like you to, if you can, get the Mother of Peace autobiography. And uh, it's beautiful. It's at Amazon.com. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for your Thank you. Thank you, Reverend Manning. And thank you. Bless you all. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.